Hey guys, welcome back to another do-it-yourself electrical video. In this video, I'm going to be modifying the branch circuit in this bedroom. Over here, when you walk in the door, you have a switch. That switch controls an outlet behind the dresser. So, if you have a lamp plugged in, as soon as you walk in, turn on the switch, the light will come on. The problem is, the receptacle behind the dresser is completely controlled by this wall switch. And that happens in a lot of different houses. Instead of making half of the duplex receptacle always on and one half switched so you can have a lamp go on and off, they have everything controlled by the wall switch. So in this video, I'm going to take the switch and I need to split it. One half needs to remain on all the time and the other half needs to become switch controlled. I'll also explain in the event that you have other receptacles away from the switch that you wanna have switch controlled, how you can do that. Now the reason why I need the power here on all the time as well as switch controlled is because I'm going to have a laptop positioned on the center of this dresser. To get started, let's take a look at the wall switch. I need to find out if the power is coming in by the wall switch or by the receptacle. Let's take off this cover to this Decora switch. In case you're wondering, this house was built in the late 1950s and there's electrical metallic tubing or conduit that's connecting each one of the switches to the receptacles throughout the home. More modern homes more than likely are just going to have a Romex cable in the wall with staples secured into the electrical box using a Romex clamp. The Romex clamps look like what you see right here. With that cover removed, the next thing I'm going to do is leave something plugged into the electrical receptacle and then turn off the circuit breaker for this branch circuit. With the power off, now I'm going to remove the screws holding the switch in this metal electrical box. When you're working on electrical, you always want to have shoes on. Do not do this barefoot. Even if the branch circuit is off, there may be other wires inside the electrical box that are still hot on a different branch circuit and if you accidentally touch them, you can get shocked. All that's in this box are two blue wires. Blue is a hot color. You may find black wires, red wires, and even yellow wires. As long as they're those colors, you're going to know it's hot. Now that I know there's just two wires here, that's an indication that the power is coming from the receptacle down below. Instead of a cable coming down from the top or even up from the bottom, going to the switch, and then over to the outlets. So let's leave this alone, slide out the dresser, and take a look. Okay, this is the receptacle behind the dresser. I'm going to unscrew the cover first. Now remove the screws, holding the receptacle inside the electrical box. Let's pull this outward here. With the receptacle removed from the box, you can see the two blue wires are going into this conduit bottom left so it must be going down over and up to that switch over here we have white and blue coming from the right bottom nothing on top but there is an opening at the rear with a black and white wire that's going to another receptacle so i know the power is not coming from back here it's definitely coming from here now if you look at the receptacle you're going to notice that the ground screw has no wire connected to it and even though there's no wire connected to this, or it hasn't been, which is not a good thing, it is grounded because this screw is connected to this metal right here, and the metal is connected to the metal that the screws are used to secure the receptacle to the box. When you have a metal electrical box, as long as these screws are very tight, pushing the switch or outlet against the metal box, you're going to have a connection because the metal box is connected to the metal conduit and the metal conduit is connected to the electrical panel, which is grounded. So there is a ground connection, even though the NEC doesn't like that type, it is grounded. But in order to do this right, when I put everything back, I'm going to add a wire, bare copper or a green one between the screw and the metal box. Now, if you look over here, you got the neutral going to the silver screw and that is the longer prong, that's the neutral. And on the opposite side, let me flip this around, not easy. 
Over here, you can see whoever did this did a lousy job putting this copper wire around that brass screw on the hot side. You're supposed to slide it around with a narrower hook. And then once it goes around the screw head, you get your needle nose between the tip and the wire and give it a little bit of a squeeze so it's tight. And then when you turn the screw clockwise, it's going to help close that loop. So that's going to be fixed. But if you take a look right over here, you can see there's a little tiny tab that goes between this screw with that plate and this screw with the brass plate right in between. Now, as long as that tab is connected between those two plates, you're going to have the entire receptacle either powered constantly by AC power, 120 volts, or if it's connected to a switch, as in my case, the entire receptacle is going to be switch controlled. Now for me, I need to have the top always on or the bottom and then the other side switch controlled so I can have a lamp at the end of the dresser that turns on and off at night when you walk in the room. So in order to do that, I'm going to take the needle nose and twist this back and forth. Just grab it and go up and down, up and down, keep going back and forth. The metal will fatigue and that piece will snap off. Once that's done, you're going to have two separate circuits. The top receptacle here and the bottom will be separate. And this is also used underneath kitchen sinks if you have a disposal and a dishwasher. It's called a split circuit. You'll have a 20 amp breaker, double pole connected to this outlet. And you're gonna have one leg of the 120 going to one screw and the other leg to the other screw and the neutral is used to complete the circuit. So if one trips, usually they'll both trip off so you can reset it. But that's how you do a split circuit if you had two different loads connected to the same outlet. So it's very handy. A lot of people don't realize that tab is there. So let me just grab it right now, pop it off, so we can go on to the next step of making this the correct way. And as you can see, using the bar meter, you want to check first. I'm going to go between ground and the black screw. Nothing going on. And also check to the silver screw with the white wire on the opposite side of the receptacle. So we got nothing going on. It's safe to touch all this now. That was not nice when I did that. But we will fix it. This was a little short the wire, that's why they extended it, not a big deal. Let me just tighten this back down. Hopefully this is pretty clear for you guys to see. Grab this right here and just wiggle back and forth until it fatigues and snaps. There you go, see that? Now we have the top isolated from the bottom. So we're going to take this off, do this over again in a minute. Pull some of that blue wire a little bit extra. Put a new wire here, a short section, number 14, to one screw. And I'm going to need a hot wire going to the opposite screw. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to connect another black wire underneath this red wire nut and feed it over to the top screw. So now we'll have always on at the top and switch controlled at the bottom. Now usually, if you're going to have conduit like this, the next pipe here, or conduit, goes down and over to another receptacle. So if that receptacle was not switch controlled and you wanted it to be, but there's only two wires, you would have to insert another wire into that conduit. So it would have to be a black wire, a yellow wire, or even a red wire. In order to add the extra wire, you're going to have to either use a fish tape to pull one through, or you can do what I've done in the past, pretty easy. Take one of the existing wires in the conduit. You're going to remove the wire nut, take the end of it, twist it onto two new wires, and one of the new wires is going to replace the wire that you're pulling out because you got to put that one back when you go to pull in the, the new one with the old one that you had. If you do not have conduit and your cable, which is Romex, does not have three conductors, a black, red, and white going all around the bedroom, then you're going to have to add an additional wire. The only way to do that is to take 
Usually I would use a 14-2 because most bedrooms are a 15 amp circuit. You would take the 14-2 Romex, take a knockout out of the bottom of the box or the top. Make sure you have the Romex connector in position so there's no cutting of the cable. And you have to either take that cable from this box to the next one you want to control by going up into the wall through your attic and down to the next receptacle or go straight down towards the baseboard molding, remove the baseboard molding, and cut the sheetrock about three inches up off the floor so you can run your cable inside the wall where you cannot hit it by nails, replace the sheetrock, and then put the baseboard molding back. That's the only way you're going to be able to get the switch controlled receptacle at a different location in your bedroom if you have a Romex cable, but it only uses two conductors instead of three. If there's a receptacle in your room, more than one, that's completely switch controlled, what you can do is look for another hot wire inside your electrical box, separate it the way I did right here, tap into the hot wire to one side of the receptacle, so at least when you turn that switch off, you're not going to lose the entire receptacle in case you have to vacuum or plug something else in. So let me take this wire here, push it to the side, and let me grab this connection here and pull it out so I can tap in. I'm going to take the short section that's going to go to the receptacle. It's going to be added in. And I'm going to twist all of these together with my lineman's pliers and then put on a red wire nut. You can see over here, I replaced that wire nut with this connector. These are very good. I did a video testing these. If you haven't seen the video testing different electrical connectors, you're going to see a link at the end of this video. It's very good, so be sure to check it out. When you twist this together using the linemans, you want to make sure you twist it enough that you also twist the wires just a little bit. Tighten this down very securely so nothing moves. And that is good. Let me tuck this up and off to the side. Okay, everything here is pretty good. If you look at this wire going in, it looks white right here, and then up here it looks bluish. All right, so I'm not sure if it's white or blue. It's hard to tell, but it looks more blue than it does white but it's definitely white over here. So what I'm going to do, because it looks blue right here going in, I'm going to open up this opposite side, slide a piece of white heat shrink tubing over that entire wire, heat shrink it so at least it's identified as neutral and not a hot color. So that'll be done after I put this side together. So now I'm going to loosen these two screws and connect up these two wires and then connect the ground wires. Let's make the top Switch controlled, right here. That's this one. Go like that. Now that's actually good. I don't have to grab the needle nose on that one. It will close and you can see behind the screw head that brass plate is grooved. That's gonna keep the wire from slipping out. Make sure the loop goes clockwise so it tightens as you turn the screw clockwise. You want that loop to close clockwise. That's perfect. Now the bottom one, same way. This will be the always hot. This will be great. Won't have to worry about my laptop not having an area to plug in all the time. Go like this. That's not bad either. Looks good. Tighten it here. That loop should close up. Okay. Goes around nice. That's tight. So this looks good. Everything here looks good. Now I'm just going to take care of the ground and we're good to go. You see the Ground screw in the back of the box, going right over to that ground screw, and I just made this white, so at least this side you can see that it's a white wire, not a hot wire, 
And when I'm done here, like I said, I'll go on the opposite side and just slide heat shrink over that blue wire. Let's put it back together and give it a try. The bottom one should be on all the time. All right, regardless of switch position, the switch is off. Let's put it on. Okay, switch is back off. And the top one should be off. And when I turn the switch on, it should be controlled. There you go. Very simple. So if I didn't have a hot wire available at this location, and there was a hot wire available over by the switch location, I would have simply inserted another conductor of the same gauge, in this case 14 gauge, into the conduit to go between that receptacle and the switch. If there was not a constant hot wire at the wall switch, the next thing I would have done is went around the corner to the next electrical receptacle to see if there was one there. If there was, I would insert a conductor between here and the other receptacle so I'd be able to have this on and switch controlled. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.